Good morning. Good morning. Everybody kind of blew in this morning. It is a chilly, chilly um, Palm Sunday for us today. This is the sixth Sunday of Lent, and next Sunday is Easter. Cannot believe it has gone so quickly, and here we are, uh, beginning Holy Week, and all of the powerful emotions that it will bring up within us as we move toward Resurrection Sunday. So, folks in the house have palm branches, and we'll be having a palm parade here in just a few minutes. Uh, but first, I want to say welcome. My name is Cindy Buman, honored to be the pastor here at Ebenezer United Methodist Church, and to welcome you to our Lenten series, What Are You Up To? And Jamie came in today, and he saw these balloons for the first time, because he's been watching online uh, for a month and had never seen those. So Josh is gonna, going to, I said I've been pointing to them every day. <laughs> So I want folks at home to be able to see the lovely balloons. Uh, what are you up to? That has been our theme during this season of Lent. And the scriptures we have explored have been talking about what Jesus has been up to during this season as he's moving ever closer to Jerusalem and what's going to happen there. He knows what's been happen, going to happen there. He's been trying to prepare his disciples, but they're having a hard time understanding. And we expect them to have a hard time understanding. It was way, way out of anything that they have ever known before. So today, Jesus is going to get to Jerusalem. And as he rides into the city... We call it the triumphal entry, but it isn't like grand kings or emperors coming into the city. It's a whole different kind of king. And as we, as we know now, he's been moving toward Jerusalem, and now he's here. And for Jesus, there's no turning back. No turning back. You'll have to face what is, what is going to happen in these next days. And so I think for us, this point, this Lenten journey, no turning back for us either. We either choose to follow or we don't. But no turning back either way. So, welcome you to this powerful Palm Sunday worship. Uh, this morning, our theme is sit up. Jesus sitting up on the donkey as he processes into Jerusalem. And we'll be talking about how others have, are sitting up to take notice and how we are to sit up and take notice too and how we're to respond to that. So, let's talk about birthdays, anniversaries. Merle's mother, Betty, was... 87. What day was it? Wednesday. Wednesday. Look at all these people coming. Wednesday. Wednesday. Coming up? Okay. Your birthday? All right. I'm not going to try to count. Okay. Your birthday? <gasps> Eileen's birthday today. Woo woo. 25 years. Congratulations. That silver anniversary. Woo, woo, woo. Oh. One more. <laughs> All right. We have birthdays, anniversaries. Let's sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. And happy anniversary. Happy, happy, happy. All right. Well, let's begin as we have been doing during this season of Lent with a prayer of confession and assurance. 
So, make no mistake, the powers that be in Jerusalem sat up and took notice at the actions of Jesus and his motley crew of palm-waving followers on that morning. It was a show of the power of love and injustice for the least of these. In stark juxtaposition to the military might of the Roman rulers. It was a non-violent action featuring a man sitting on a donkey. An action that has offered hope throughout the ages. Will we sit up and take notice of the injustice of this world and work to eradicate it in ways that honor that first Palm Sunday parade? Pray with me, please, this prayer of confession. Peace-loving God, our first instinct in fighting oppression is often to take up weapons, utter fighting words, and lash out with vitriol. But Jesus demonstrated humility and patience, even against his mortal enemies. In this moment of quiet, we lift up to you those things we'd like to give up for good, for the sake of the good. Hear these words of assurance in what the psalmist proclaims. This morning words from Psalm 118. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say God's steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and God has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for, the God, for God is good, for God's steadfast love endures forever. Friends, in the name of Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Okay, Wade, you're up. And we are going to sing Tell Me the Stories of Jesus as we wave our palm branches. And I would like, um, yeah, the boys and girls, if you boys and girls would like to go back to the back and be in the parade, you sure can. And then we'll all wave our branches, and boys and girls can stay up here uh, when the song's over, okay? Invite you to stand as you're able. Tell me the stories of Jesus. I love to hear things I would ask him to
There we go. And then you may be seated. Boys and girls, you can be up here. Thanks, Wade, for riding on the donkey this morning. So, what do we call today? What kind of Sunday? It's Sunday, but Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. And we're talking about Jesus riding into the city of Jerusalem on a donkey. But people were very surprised that he was on a donkey. What did they expect? Jesus to ride in on a... A big, powerful horse. Jesus was going to be their new king. And they expected him to help overthrow the Romans. So they did not expect him to come in on a donkey. Because the donkeys aren't very tall. And Jesus' legs were probably almost dragging the ground. And do you know what the people did? What did the people do that were lined up along the streets? Hosanna, Hosanna. And that means save us. Save us. They wanted Jesus to save them from the Romans who were, were mean and tried to control them and wouldn't let them live the way that they wanted to. So some of them took off their jackets, took off their outside wraps, and they laid it down on the road so Jesus could, uh, the donkey could walk on it. And so that was another sign of how much they appreciated Jesus and loved him and that he was going to be, or he was, their new king. But he wasn't coming in like they thought he would. And so Jesus is all about kindness and love and justice. And so he's about peace. He isn't about fighting with swords he isn't about fighting with fists. He doesn't want any fights. He wants the people to love each other and to settle their differences with conversation and words. No violence. No violence. So, I wanted us to think about our story, the Up, Up book. And Mr. Fredrickson, his name was Carl, and he's really the main character in the story, isn't he? He's really the main character. And when you think about a children's movie or a children's book, you usually think maybe a child's going to be the main character. But Mr. Fredrickson is because this whole movie is about how he moves through his grief of, learn of his wife Ellie passing away. And then the adventure that they have, getting his, his house to Paradise Falls, and the new friends that he makes. What are his friends' names? Doug the dog. And what's the Boy Scout's name? Russell. Russell. Good. Russell. And so he's made good friends. And when that mean old Mr. Munts sets his house on fire, and tries to capture uh, Kevin the bird. Yeah, but then find a way. That Mr. Frederickson finds a way to get uh, Russell and Doug and Kevin back without any violence, but he uses his mind to come up with a, a strategy and to. Uh, to come up with a plan that they can get those people back yeah. safely without any big fights like Mr. Yeah. Munts would have them do. So he's a good example to us of how to, how to solve problems without violence. And that's what Jesus was all about and what Jesus would have us do too. So when you guys fight... I, I'm suspecting that you fight. You boys fight each other? Sometimes. Sometimes? So is, is there hitting involved? No. Pinching? No. How, what, what happens when you fight? Do you wrestle? Yeah, but sometimes 
We play fight. You play fight? Yeah. yeah. Does anybody ever get hurt? Nope. No. No? Well, sometimes I've known people, boys, to wrestle and furniture to get broken and, and bumps to be had. And it's not very pretty. And it's especially with people that we love, we shouldn't fight. So this is a good story for us to think about. If we're not happy, if something's not going right, we need to talk about it and get a grown-up involved and try to, try to come to some kind of agreement where that uh, we'll be able to get along. So, all right. I want, um, that's, that's a reminder today for our Palm Sunday that Jesus came in peace. Jesus came in peace and wants us all to work for peace in our world. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for these boys and girls and for the children watching today online. We thank you, God, for all the ways we bless you bless us, and we just love these children so much, and we know you do too. Help us, God, to find peaceful ways to settle our differences and to be able to get along and know that that's the way Jesus lived his life and teaches us to live. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. <laughs> Surprise! All right. We began our Palm Sunday uh, message time with uh, Scripture. This morning from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, Verses 12 through 16. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. As it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. We give God thanks for the gift of this scripture. Well, I love Palm Sunday, don't you? We've been looking forward to this day, and I look forward to waving the palm branches as the boys and girls parade through the sanctuary. It's a party. It's a party. It's a parade billed as Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Sure, they, we were a little surprised that Jesus would choose a donkey as transport on such an important day. But then again, Jesus was always one to do the unexpected. Never mind, though. Look at the adoring crowds. Men, women, children, so excited to see him up close. The one that they've been hearing about, the one they've been waiting to see, the one who speaks about changing the world. Sometimes, though, I think we get stuck there. Our first thoughts and our last thoughts about Palm Sunday, the parade, and our initial reactions to it. A celebration of seeing Jesus. Maybe like we might react to seeing our foot favorite football players parade down the street. Or a popular musician. Or a famous actor. Or an important political figure. A celebration of celebrity. 
There he is, Jesus, Jesus. Hoping that he would look your way and maybe wave. Jesus, Jesus. But there is more to this triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And that's where I'd like us to focus this morning. Before we get to the actual parade, though, let's be reminded of what Jerusalem was like during a Passover celebration. And first, a refresher on Passover. I want you to think Moses, called by, no, oh, wait a minute, think first of the Hebrew people enslaved in Egypt for 400 years. That's a long time long time. Now, think Moses, called by God from the wilderness to go back to Egypt to tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. Think a resistant Pharaoh, even through the plagues that God rains down upon the Egyptian people. Then think the final plague, the death of firstborn sons. Pharaoh's son included. Moses gives the Hebrew people instructions about what to do, what to eat, how to prepare it, and then to mark their doorposts with lamb's blood so that the angel of death might pass over their homes. After a night of terror throughout the land, they realize they have been saved. And they gather up their belongings and they flee toward the Red Sea and the freedom beyond its banks. Now, even though Pharaoh says they can go, he soon changes his mind, of course, and he and his charioteers chase the Hebrew people, determined to prevent their escape. God escape route. And when the people are safely on the other side, waters flow back together again, consuming those who pursued them. And the Hebrew people are free at last. Free at last. Every year since that first Passover, the Hebrew people then the nation of Israel, then the Jewish people have celebrated Passover. Celebrate Passover today as a remembrance of that first night when death passed over their homes, allowing freedom to become a possibility. They say the same words. They eat the same foods. They become part of of the history of their faith. And so now we fast forward hundreds of years and the Jews in first century Jerusalem are having Passover. They've all descended upon the city. And it, of course, it was a reminder of God's deliverance from slavery in Egypt. But now it is the Roman government who is oppressing them. And they have strong hopes and beliefs that God can and God will deliver them once again from their cruel oppressors. And they believe that Jesus is the one who's going to do that. So now, Roman officials, they know the history of Passover too. And each year they wonder if this is going to be the year that the Jews organize to take back their city, to take back their lives from Roman rule. And so they're not taking any chances. They're prepared. And so a parade of sorts moves into the city from the west. Pilate, can you imagine him? Pilate draped in gaudy glory of imperial power and his horses, and his chariots, and the gleaming armor. And he moves in with the Roman army, his legions from Caesarea, it's on the coast of the Mediterranean. They are moving in toward Jerusalem to intimidate and to secure the overcrowded city at Passover. 
and his stomping regiments and their arms clattering and the banners waving high. It's a show of strong, strong power to ensure that nothing gets out of hand during this Passover celebration. From the east came another procession, a commoner's procession. So contrast the picture of Pilate in his show of power and Jesus, dressed in an ordinary robe, riding on a donkey, a borrowed donkey at that. The sound of the donkey hooves clip-clopping on the stone street. Children waving those leafy branches in the air, and they're all moving toward the city. So here comes Pilate. Here comes Jesus. We have this perpetual clash of good and evil that's going to come to its climax here in Jerusalem. So these kinds of entry processions were pretty common because kings would come to town throughout the centuries. And so whenever a dignitary, an important person arrived, they always had these kinds of mighty processions. Many anointed kings and generals entered Jerusalem over the years, but they'd never seen a king like Jesus. He was a king, all right but no ordinary king. He's the king of fishermen and tax collectors, Samaritans, prostitutes, crippled people, blind men, people possessed by demons. Those who followed Jesus were a ragtag bunch. Those considered unfit unworthy for any kind of aspirations. They have no hope in their life. They don't talk about what they can be when they grow up. Their station in life is pretty, pretty much laid out. They don't have any kind of hope for the future. But through their relationship with Jesus, those misfits became somebodies, women who now leaped for joy, a Samaritan leper with a heart full of gratitude, a crippled woman who hadn't been able to stand up straight for 18 years, and now she could look Jesus in the face. And a once blind man who'd followed Jesus all the way from Jericho. So the cloaks they threw on the road that day were not expensive coats. They laid on the ground what they had, what was precious to them. Their tattered shawls, sweat-stained rags. Jesus was the king of the oppressed and the suffering. He shared their hardships. He relieved their suffering. He accepted them when others called them unacceptable. Jesus gave them hope and embodied God's love for them. And now they came to march with him into the holy city. Back to the scripture. The next day... The great crowd that had come to the festival, Jerusalem was full. People, Jews, had come from all over to celebrate Passover in the holy city. So they'd come for the festival. They heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of of Israel. The throng of disciples can't contain themselves. They're so excited. It's Jesus. If half of what they have been saying about him is true, then maybe he really is the one, the Messiah, the one to save us from Roman rule. 
The Gospel of John's account of the parade doesn't mention the religious leader's reaction, but the Gospel of Luke does. And he reports, some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, Teacher, rebuke your followers for saying things like that. A group of Pharisees tell Jesus to order his disciples to stop. So there are a couple of possibilities. Maybe they're embarrassed by this wild, ecstatic praise that their crowds are heaping on Jesus. Or maybe they're trying to warn Jesus of the danger of a demonstration like this. We read earlier in Luke that some Pharisees warned Jesus about Herod's murderous intent. And they said, get away from here. For Herod wants to kill you. So it sounds like some are trying to protect Jesus. But I suspect they were really trying to protect themselves. Were the Pharisees afraid that the Roman authorities would smell insurrection? After all, that's why they brought their armies in from the West. To be prepared to secure the city. They smell insurrection and respond with terrible vengeance against the Jewish people. That's probably what the Pharisees were afraid of. But Jesus replied to them, if they kept quiet, meaning the people waving their branches, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. Pharisees, this is the truth too good not to be told. The truth may be temporarily silenced, but not for long. Pharisees, if these disciples, some of the disciples fall away because they're afraid or just don't care enough, God is going to raise up more disciples to speak up and to speak out. Injustice will finally lose out to justice for all of God's people. And so, the parade continued with shouts of joy, shouts of hope, shouts of pleading, Hosanna! Save us, Jesus! Save us now! Hosanna! So, that's the setting, the context for the parade which is more than our initial assumptions about this event we celebrate every Palm Sunday. Now, with all of that information in our heads and in our hearts, let's take a minute to consider, to see ourselves in the shoes of the characters in this story. Now, if you're like me, I suspect it is easiest to see ourselves along the parade route. We would be some of those followers lined up along the streets, waving the palm branches. So right now, imagine yourselves. We're in the parade route. And here comes Jesus coming down the center aisle. And you're caught up in the excitement, gathering the palm branches, handing them out to others, waving them high. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Come on. Shout with me. Hosanna. Hosanna. Save us, Jesus. Save us. Hosanna. Hosanna. Do you feel the excitement and the energy? There's Jesus. He's coming. You could almost reach out and touch him. You've been hearing about him. You've wanted to meet him for a long time. He's here. It's really him. It's really him. If there were such a thing as autographs, then you'd be trying to get his autograph. Now, shift gears. Put your palm branches down. Can you see yourself as a Pharisee? I want you to step, you're not on the parade route, but you're stepping back into the shadows. You want to distance yourself as far as possible from what might happen up here. Maybe you're one of the rule followers who doesn't want anyone to get into trouble. 
Are you a rule follower? <laughs> Do you try to shh those around you who, out of fear that their words or their actions might disturb the powers that be and we're going to have trouble? We're all going to get in trouble. I remember in high school and... Uh, the principal would come into our classroom and he'd have some people he wanted to take to the office and, and he was chewing us out about something. And even though I had no idea what was going on, I just kind of sank down in my seat, feeling bad, feeling guilty for whatever somebody else might have done. Why can't they just follow the rules? Don't wanting, not wanting any trouble. Are you a Pharisee trying to distance yourself, not wanting to get into trouble? And finally, I think it's probably hardest to imagine ourselves on the donkey with Jesus. It's one thing to be cheering from the sidelines but it's another to put ourselves out there, to be the center of attention, to be fully seen, to stand up and to stand out. Most of us, anyway, don't want to cause a fuss. And I think about political candidates and how, how we've, you know, we'll say, surely there's somebody better than this. But we know what candidates go through. <laughs> Who wants to put themselves out there? It's hard. It's hard. So, how many palm wavers do we have in the congregation this morning? Are you a palm waver along the parade route? Anybody admit to want to be a Pharisee? Any rule followers? Anybody able to see themselves on the donkey with Jesus? Are you willing to put yourself out there? The theme for, our, well, I want you to think about it. Wrestle with that this week. The theme for our Wednesday night group this week was our call to be witnesses to the way God is at work in our world and in our lives. And that includes, of course, our responsibility as witnesses to share about our faith, to talk about how we are comforted and supported through life, through the highs, through the lows of life. But it's more than that when we get right down to it. Being a witness means being challenged to love like Jesus loved. To work for justice like Jesus did. To show mercy and compassion to the least of these among us. Micah 6.8 sums it up well. Sums up our responsibility. The question is asked, what does the Lord require of you? To do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. And as we talked about in our Wednesday night class, if you see something, say something. If you feel something, say something. If you experience something, say something. Be a witness. Be a witness. Well, today's phrase is sit up. Jesus sitting up on the donkey. A sign of humility and solidarity with those who were such a part of his mission and ministry. The religious leaders also sit up and take notice. 
taking note of Jesus' latest offensive behavior, which leads them to an even greater determination to shut him up for good. They, their plan kicks into high gear. How are we going to eliminate Jesus? And I'm sure the Romans were sitting up too, taking notice. Was an uprise inevitable? They were primed and ready to quash rebellion. So are we willing to sit up and take notice too of what Jesus has done, what Jesus is doing, and what Jesus needs us to help continue to do in the world? Are we willing to sit up, to get up, to speak up as witnesses to and for his purposes in the world today? May the Holy Spirit be at work within us, leading us, guiding us, putting those opportunities in front of us, convicting us of what we are to do. May it be so. Blessing upon you all as our Lenten journey draws to a close. Amen. Amen. Our next music is Chain Breaker. And for all of those people who Jesus encountered, um, Jesus was about breaking the chains of bondage. And for all of the people who experienced relationship with Jesus since then and continue today and into the future, Jesus continues to be that chain breaker offering us freedom. I invite you to stand as you're able as we sing together. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, if you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies, if you're trying to fill the same old holes inside, there's a better life, there's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking singer. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. We've all searched for light of day instead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. We've all run to things we know just ain't right. When there's a better life, there's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. You feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking singer. If you got chains, but he's a chain breaker. If you believe it, if you receive it, you can feel it, somebody testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify, testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. He's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking singer. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. 
If you need freedom, we say it. He's a prison ship, you say it. You got chains, but he's a chain breaker. Love that song. You may be seated. Now, do you know somebody who's in chains right now? who could use a good word to help them break those chains that are holding them? Maybe it's something they've been trying to get out of for years. And they've tried, and they've tried, and it hadn't worked. Remember last year when we sang, or last week, excuse me, when we sang, Love Lifted Me? When nothing else but love could Help, love lifted me. So here's the help. Here's the love. So if you know somebody that is, that ex- is experiencing that bondage and would like to be free, they're the one you need to go witness to. Offer a kind word of help and understanding and invite them to hear the story of Jesus. Second sermon, amen. (laughs) That was a short one. That one was for free. (laughs) All right, we take a look at our prayer requests. I had a good visit with uh, Merle's mother, Betty, this week, and she's getting ready to start some chemotherapy. She started it, but it's pill form, so... Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, good. There are snacks. Huh? Well, Mary's Mary's been through that and can, you know, offer her some support. She's a very delightful woman. We had a nice visit. So, others on the list. Kevin Fagan has had a setback. Uh, he's a classmate of high school classmate of mine, and uh, he is back as of Thursday night, back in ICU with some blood clot issues. So a scary thing for him. How about other folks on the list? Mary? I think you could take me off the prayer list. After my second eye was done, I had 20-20 vision. Woo-woo! Well, I said, yeah, wow. That's great. Take her off of there. (laughs) Any others that we want to lift up this morning? Matt, anybody online? No? Good deal. Laura? I had two friends call me this week because they came down with cancer. Uh-oh. One of them, I learned how to dance regular dancing, and one of them is a square dancer. The square dancer is in his 50s, and the other one is in her 80s. Oh. And I told her we would pray. Okay. Laura's two friends with cancer diagnoses. And that's what Shauna Collar that I put on there. She uh, She's in her lower 50s, diagnosed with breast cancer. Okay. So cancer is just... And then this week we've heard about um, um, Prince William's um, Kate. 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 Um, And so she'll be a great spokesperson, have quite a a platform for being able to help people uh, with cancer awareness and getting tested and all those things. So... It's just everywhere. Laura? Um, I forgot to mention Holly and Dwight. Holly did go in, they went in and did needlework to her eye, and she's having to sit with her head down for another almost 72 hours. And, but she is home, and Dwight is taking it better than we thought. And so keep us in your prayers for the okay. whole week because she can't lift on him in any way, shape, or form, and uh, she's having a harder having us girls come in and take care of him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything else. Accepting the help. So that's yeah. Holly and Dwight. Anything else? Then we say, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. What about Joyce? I fell off my stepstool. In my 
my kitchen, and I was okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking that should have been a couple of minutes ago. But you're okay. okay. Were you on the top step? Yep. Yep. Right there, it everything for me, and it was all good. Whew. Okay. <laughs> Shannon? Plattsburgh, all right. So an advancement for your niece, is that right? Yeah. Cool, cool. Laura. I fell last week too in my backyard. I'm really very thankful I didn't have two broken kneecaps. Mm. And I closed God for his face. Yeah. But, uh, and my daughter Kathy, most of you know, uh, she's having all of her teeth pulled and getting dentures. And bless her heart, she's doing really good. Well, good. Good, good. All right, anything else? Kenny. I survived parent teacher conference. Whoa. <laughs> Both JP and you, I had excellent re reviews. Well, good. Yep, yep, our boys got good Your boys got good, good reviews too. Yeah. Got 10 A's. Woo! <laughs> woo, woo, woo. Yeah, Jackson's on the honor roll. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. All right, we say, Lord, in your love, Hear our praise. Let's go to our God in prayer. Thank you, God, for this day that we can be here as a community of faith to share our love for you, to share our love for each other, to worship your name, to celebrate Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem and to contemplate what lies ahead for him and for us as his faithful disciples. Help us, God, to continue to feel the responsibility of being witnesses to that love and to the faith that buoys us up and sees us through the challenges of daily life. We've heard this morning of so many of our friends and family that are struggling we pray for those who need your healing touch in a powerful way. We pray for those who are in the midst of treatment, those who continue to recover, and those families that are in the midst of grief this day. We know that you know about grief and walk with us through the journey guiding us and leading us to come out on the other side. Help us to be witnesses to that hope that we have and to be able to share it with friends and neighbors and family, co-workers that we know are struggling and need some help in the chain-breaking department. We thank you, God, for the joys, for the successes of this past week, for new opportunities that you put before us to help us grow, to be challenged, to meet new people, to do new things. We thank you for successful procedures and surgeries and just all the many ways for great parent-teacher conferences and we celebrate and are so proud of our young people as they continue to learn and to grow. God, we just uh, pray that you will be with us in a powerful way. We know you will be. We pray that we might feel your presence in a powerful way as we move into Holy Week and look toward Easter Resurrection Sunday next week. So much will happen. We are sorry of, for what Jesus had to endure, especially when we know it's on our behalf. But we are grateful as well, O oh God. We thank you for Jesus, for his life, for his ministry, and for his setting his face toward Jerusalem 
and all that is to come there. It is in his name that we are here today. In his name now that we pray together the prayer he taught us. In your name we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. All right, time for our offering, this part of our worship. If you are a guest with us this morning, our worship is a, our gift to you, and your presence here is a gift to God. And so we pray. Um, for these gifts that we will receive today. Also a reminder that you, hopefully, if you didn't get an envelope last week, you got an envelope in the mail with an Easter letter outlining the events of this coming week and also with an Easter offering envelope. Um, we'll receive those next Sunday. You can send a gift to the church at number 2 Southeast 68th Road St. Joseph. 64507. You can give online at www.ebenezerstjoe.com. And then council chose for this year's Easter offering to go to feed our benevolence fund locally so that we can help people who are in need. So I invite you to stand now for the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, O oh God, for these gifts that we bring today. We entrust them to your care that they be multiplied to do good work to build your kingdom. In your holy name we pray. Amen. You all may be seated. We have a video today. All right. Good morning, Ebenezer. This Tuesday, March 26th, Ag Council, 6.30 p.m. March 28th, Monday, Thursday. Service, 6.30 p.m. here at Ebenezer. March 29th is Good Friday. There'll be a Tenebrae service, 6.30 p.m. at Clare. March 30th, Easter Egg Hunt, 2 p.m. here at Ebenezer. What's an Easter egg's least favorite day? Friday. March 31st is Easter Sunday, and we'll be having a sunrise service at 7 a.m., followed by breakfast at 8 a.m and then our Easter Sunday service at 9.30. Then, Saturday, April 6th, we have our next Open Door Food Kitchen. Get signed up. We would normally be having men's breakfast on the first Saturday of the month, but due to Open Door Food Kitchen, we moved men's breakfast to the following Saturday, April 13th at 8.30 a.m. And of course, don't forget about Trivia Night, April 20th. Get signed up. Do you have anything to announce? Send us an email with info, and we'll be sure to share it. Now we'll see if the pews have anything to announce. Pews, over to you. All right. I do want to mention, uh, Eileen. Uh, this is the pews for the Easter egg hunt uh, on, on uh, Sat next Saturday. Okay. And any leftovers we have from there will be going out to um, our friends that aren't able to get out. Okay, I did want to, um, Josh and Jen have put up um, some videos online. One, they're just short, two or three minutes. One tells about Monday Thursday, why we call it Monday Thursday, what happens. The next one is about Good Friday. What's so good? Why do we call it Good Friday? And then there's one about a tenebrae service 
to help understand what that's about. So they're really informative and well done and short little info things that if you'd like to go to the website, EbenezerStJoe.com, and you'll see them there and you could click on them and watch them. So I was pleased to get those. And then um, Barb has a list of the Easter lilies that have been ordered and for whom they are dedicated in memory of or in honor of. And so they'll appear next Sunday, I'm thinking, and uh, we'll have those here, and uh, our sanctuary will look differently, of course. A word about the um, Monday Thursday service is that we'll have Holy Communion that evening, and there will also be an opportunity for you to have your feet washed. Um, and that's only if you want to. I know people are kind of funny about having their, somebody else touch their feet, but it's really uh, a powerful thing uh, to have somebody serve you in that way. And so if you want to do that, I'd encourage you to wear a pair of sandals. Um, you're always welcome, though, to take your shoes and socks off. And, and uh, it's not, I'm not going to get out the scrub brush and the soap and all that. We just pour water over your foot and pat it dry. So that's that's how that goes. And it's always a powerful, powerful experience. Okay, any other things? All right, invite you to stand then for the benediction. And so now go into the world committed to peaceful acts of resistance, sitting up and paying attention to the quiet symbols of God's uplifting presence, knowing that even in the midst of crushing oppression, you have all you need to be up to something. And when someone asks you, what are you up to? You can respond, with God's help, I'm up to something good. Let the people say, amen. Amen. Go in peace. Hope to see you this week for Holy Week services.